Joey Harrington stakes Oregon to a 21-7 lead, throwing for 238 yards in the first half. Parker, six catches, 145 yards, 79 of them right here for a touchdown, Oregon, and the Ducks are up by two touchdowns. And Gary Daniels, I've got to ask you, why can't Colorado convert third and short? Why can't they run the ball? I think the quickness of this defensive line for Oregon Ducks are giving them some problems. I think the game plan of putting the safeties up there, the linebackers backed off a little bit, and the ability to have two corners that can go man to man is something teams haven't been able to do against them. And they have been very successful here in the first half of this game. So coming up now, Harrington and the Ducks will possess it to start the second half. Remember, Colorado, in a little show of arrogance, won the toss and didn't defer. They said, we want the football. So now they've got to give it up to start the second half as Hasavento loosens up on the uh, on the far sideline. So the uh, Ducks looking to get something going. This is very important here in the early minutes of the third quarter for Colorado to climb back in this. Get a stop for a turnover and and muscle with Smith back deep along with Amundsen. Here is Smith from the 10. 20. Still in bounds. Penalty flag. There is a penalty flag. So that's probably an illegal block in the back. So that'll cost the uh, the Ducks some yards. Let us sort this out. And just a moment ago, Jack Aroot caught up with Colorado coach Gary Barnett. Well, coach, what do you do to reestablish a running game? Well, we got to quit doing some of the things we're doing. And third and shorts, you know, we, we, we kill two drives on third and ones. And, uh, you know, it's hard to get creative and do what you're doing if you can't possess the football down there a little bit. And we're not throwing the ball very well. We just got to get back into our game a little bit. We got to win by 15 points. And we won't do it playing that way. Thanks, coach. All right. Now they've got to win the second half by 15. And uh, this first penalty favored Colorado. An illegal block in the back. And so the ball is brought back to the 12-yard line where Harrington and the Ducks will have a first and 10 as they break the huddle. Morris dashes out. Ian Smith has been alternating at running back. Between them, they have been every bit as successful as the Colorado running backs. They open with Morris. The commitment to the run that Bellotti talked about at the end of the first half. Well, one of the things, the reasons Colorado has had trouble getting to Joy Harrington is because he throws the ball from different spots. Launched there, launched this way two times, and in the pocket 13 times. Because he moves around, and we showed how he throws the ball all over the field, Colorado doesn't feel confident to come after him with that blitz. I think they're going to have to, though. They're going to have to move up their corners, play bump and run, and put pressure on him no matter what. Look at that jersey. Second down, that short drop. Fire it out to the left-hand side. Put it in Parker's hands for another first down. Lewis, number 31, over on the stop at 25. It is time now for our Morgan Stanley storyline of this Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. Well, you can see it's 61 yards. And in fact, at this point in the game right now, Oregon has rushed for more yards than Colorado. I never would have believed that. Harrington has been dynamic, moving the ball around to different players. I think it's been a brilliant game plan, both offensively and defensively. And those ducks, they may quack, but they're not cracking. Does that work? I think it does. <laughs> <laughs> Just underway here in the second half. It's down and 10 on the 25. There's that short drop deflected oh. incomplete. Oh, had Colorado been able to pick that one off, Joey Johnson, the Hawk linebacker, was coming inside on it. And had he gotten that ball, it would have been six Colorado. Yeah, it was a corner blitz this time from the outside, coming right off here to the outside. Now watch this. Tips the ball, and Robbie Robinson, number nine, almost could have got it, either him or Johnson. And that's the big turnover that Nebraska and Texas gave to Colorado that Oregon isn't. Second down and 10 for Harrington and the Ducks. Fires to Aury. Aury short of the 30-yard line, and Lewis among those arriving. And already here in the second half, we see more black shirts 
around the ball carrier on the tackle than we saw most of the first half. More aggressive on defense. Vince Okru has decided that he needs to get after Harrington no matter what. Move your corners off. You can't play off 10 yards and blitz though. Harrington will pick you apart. Move the corners up, come after him, and take your chances. Extra DB. Wood is on the field. Third down and six. Look at this space here. Waits for the clear. Got it. It's Peel first down. A beautiful pump fake by Joy. Peel clears, and they cross midfield with a 21-yard gain. Another one of those finesse pass plays that's part of this Oregon defense. You're going to see Joey just let him go right here. Coming back in the pocket, he's going to fake the quick screen to a wide receiver and then go to the tight end down the sideline. Well conceived and completely cast this Colorado defense off balance. In that case, you have to bring them. Bring more guys than they got. Challenge your corners to play man-to-man, -man, but you can't stay off 10 yards and expect to stop this pass off. Running to daylight is Moore's got the corner on the defensive back. Still on his feet to the 21 yard line. Does he stop? Morris. Touchdown. They couldn't bring him down. Morris not to be denied. Went 49 yards for the score. Coming right at you. Morris takes it. Bad angle to the outside here. First by Sneed, and then a bad tackle. They think he's down. Two guys in the back give up on it. Spins off, goes over the top, puts his hand down instead of his knee, and sprints into the end zone. Now for the extra point. Oregon puts a stranglehold on the Tostitas Fiesta Bowl on the first series of the second half. Morris dashes in. It's 28-7. I'm out. Hey, Hallie Eisenberg, drinking a Pepsi. Actually, this isn't a Pepsi. It's new Pepsi Twist with lemon. And I'm not Hallie Eisenberg. <laughs> I'm Hallie Berry. Drinking Pepsi Twist. Well, it's not exactly Pepsi Twist. It's Diet Pepsi Twist. And I'm not exactly Hallie Berry. You know. <laughs> I'm Barry Boswick. Who is Barry Boswick? Like twists? Try new Pepsi Twist and regular and diet. A lemon twist on that great Pepsi taste. from Chrysler. So distinct. They have an attraction all their own. How do they see through the stockings? How do they see through the stockings? They're sheer. Right. But you're missing the point of the story. The woman's car is commandeered, stranding her miles from the nearest FedEx location. She's toast? No. Directly across the street. For salvation. Directly across the street? Technically, it was Kitty Corner. Stay with me. Is it a mirage? I don't know. Is it a miracle? Yes. No. It's one of thousands of FedEx Express drop boxes strategically located at post office locations coast to coast. Keeping the engines of commerce, commerce well lubed. Precisely. What gets a child to college? The support of her family, of course. And now, the savings families can create with AT&T and You Promise. For every minute you spend on long-distance calls from home, AT&T will contribute to your child's You Promise college savings account. Get grandparents, relatives, friends to sign up, and their AT&T calls grow the savings even more. Because the more people behind a college student, the better. Start now. Enroll at att.com slash youpromise. A case that brings together father and son Ooh. could tear two partners apart. It's us who got the beef. Your kid don't belong in the middle. New NYPD Blue, ABC next Tuesday. A statement being made by the Pac-10 champions who satisfied the human voters but not the computers. And now the Ducks have opened up a 28-7 lead. Opening drive of the half. It took him only six plays to go 88 yards. Morris bolting 49 yards for the touchdown. In case you're wondering on the rule, 
He rolled over a player who was down. Knee never touched the ground, so he was not down. And that's why the run was allowed. High kickoff going to be fielded at about the six-yard line by Hollowell. Hollowell spins and brings it out to the 28-yard line. Take another look at this now, and you will see that as he comes across the prone player, knees don't touch the ground, so it's going to be a legal 49-yard run here by Morris. I think right Joey there, Johnson. Look at that. over the top of Johnson, knees don't go down, so it is legal, and he dashes the rest of the way. The heat is on Pesavento and the Buffaloes. And again, that Oregon defense stops the run. Johnson, the ball carrier, and he's eaten up in the middle of that defense. Kevin Mitchell. The linebacker doing his usual outstanding job. Brent, this is the third time lining up strong, Gerard and Rodgers have pulled to the weak side of the formation. Three plays, one yard. Been stuffed every time they've tried to come away from their strength and pull their big guys. Oregon has been right in the backfield. Somewhat surprised that Colorado doesn't stay outside sometimes. Passaveno, incomplete. And a penalty flag is thrown on the play and it goes against Bowman well that's the challenge I think if you're Oregon you live with a couple of those penalties because that allows you to put eight and nine men in the box Bowman running stride for side must have arm barred him put his arm out and kind of impeded the progress of the wide receiver Bobby, let's, against the defense, 15 yard on the previous spot, automatic touchdown. let's take a look and see if he sticks his arm out just as he starts yes he gets leverage on the play by taking his right arm and placing it on the receiver's left arm. That's a good call. Yeah. Bellotti unhappy with the call from the sideline, obviously. Bowman, a home game, needed 36 tickets. He grew up in this area. We had a chance to ask Rashad about uh, coming home to play his final college game. Here's what he said. Coming home is the best thing going, you know. That's probably one of the reasons I'm probably not as upset as the rest of my teammates about the national championship, you know, is to get that opportunity to come home and play against all my, with my friends and my family watching the game. He's just a delight. I remember when Dan Fouts and I did his first game as a freshman. He's been a starter, underwent knee surgery. He plays a lot bigger than he is. Second down now and nine. That's the better off the play fake, rolling hard to the right. And it is complete for a first down to Cedric Cormier, the senior from Houston. Colorado's starting to do a little bit what Oregon does with their passing game. Buy time by bringing your quarterback out of the pocket and then run the deep comeback. When you're facing bump and run, you can't just run fade routes. You have to give them something else, and that deep comeback off of play action is very effective against that bump and run. That's McCoy, number 80, turning back on the motion. To Graham, the tight end. Graham muscles his way to the 26-yard line and another Buffalo first down. Moretti makes the stop. What they're doing with Daniel Graham is bracketing him. Inside with the linebacker, a safety deep. You throw the ball, you'll see him triangled. Three guys coming in on him every time. If his release is across the formation, the linebacker will take him. If it's deep, the safety will take him outside the strong safety. Good game plan, again, from Oregon. Buffalo's looking for a quick strike. Pesavento to take off. Very close to the line. End of the end zone for a touchdown goes McCoy. They're calling him over and they the line. believe he was over the line yeah. when he threw it. This one is coming back. The referee made the call. The referee was a guy who ran up there and made the call. That's not usually the player, the, the uh, official that makes the call in that situation. Now the line was the 26. And as you look across at the down marker, it actually looks between the 26 and the 27. Did he pick it up? The passer was across nope. the line of scrimmage when he threw the pass. 
Five yard penalty plus loss and down. A second down. 26 and a half yard line. You can see it right there. Let's take one look at it and see where he lets this ball go. Second and 14 at the 30. Comes up in the pocket. Comes, oh boy, I don't know. Oh, wow. I think that's a bad call. I think actually the referee, the official, out of position made the call, and that's why he blew it. Johnson is eating up, but we have Dave Perry, the head of Big Ten officials, with us up here in the booth. And Dave, I know that you just had a chance to look at that replay one time. What's your feeling about the call and the man who made the ruling? Well, normally a uh, referee would not make that call, nor would be a line of scrimmage official. Extremely close, gonna have to look at it some more. I'm sure they will in the tape review. Looked to me like his ball, the ball was out of his hand before he got past the line of scrimmage, but I think the wrong official made the call. Trailing the play like that, it is so hard for him to make that decision when he's not looking down the line. That's what you hate to see. Incomplete, overthrew McCoy that time, and it is fourth down. So a terrible break for the Buffaloes here with 9.35 to go in the third quarter. Down by 21 points, Gary Barnett needed that touchdown. I'm sure Oregon will stay with their defense on the field. They will look for a fake here and force Colorado to just kick the field goal. Jeremy Flores didn't kick the first half. He got a 47-yarder. He played at Scottsdale Community College before going up to Boulder. No good. So he missed the 47-yarder. So we can say that nothing is going right for the Buffaloes. And they trail the Oregon Ducks 28-7. This one was close, but he just pulled it too much. Time out. Chrysler 300M, the most powerful V6 sports sedan in its class. With its seductive styling and inspired engineering, it is truly a pleasure to drive. Even when that sort of thing is strictly forbidden. Samuel, is that you? Yes, it is I. <laughs> Do you like the conditioner and shampoo in one? Well, yeah, you know, I do, but it does leave my hair a little oily and... and... Dang it! Oh! 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 What is wrong with you, you idiot? Is it not a toy? Crazy, Bobby. I... He's sensitive. He... What if he tore it off? I can't, I can't believe... You've got some big ones, my friend. I didn't think you had it in you. Scratch here. There's a dent over here. These are the beasts of burden, the pack mules. They trudge diligently at their master's command. This creature will live a hard life, shouldering great burdens every day, instead of roaming free like his cousin, the wild stallion. A Nokia communicator. The ability to do just about everything without having to carry just about everything. Nokia, connecting people. The Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. This ABC Sports exclusive brought to you by Tostitos Scoops, the dip lover's chip. Dig in. Nokia, personalize your phone, your life, your world. Nokia, connecting people. ESPN, which sports center do you watch? Mornings, evenings, late nights? And Chrysler, drive equals love. Well, the sun beginning to set on the Valley of the Sun, and it also beginning to set on Colorado. A very bad break just moments ago for the Buffaloes, who appeared to many to have scored. Joy Harrington on a great play fake. He's got the fullback running free for another first down, and that's Josh Line, the senior from Springfield, Oregon. 16 more yards for Joey Harrington, who has now throwing for almost 300. Just another different play from Oregon. You can never settle on exactly what they're going to do. 
first down, they're going to throw deep. First down, they're going to run the counter. First down, they're going to run the bootleg. Oregon, uh, Colorado, excuse me, needs to man up and come after Harrington. It's their only chance in this game, and they're off 10 yards again. Parker's in the slot. Got him again, and he is hit just as soon as he touches the ball by Michael Lewis, the safe. Check it with Jack and Ruth. Brent, this is a very special weekend for Josh Line. You see, he and his wife, Tiffany, were supposed to be welcoming their first child into the world sometime after this game. But their young daughter was Griff, their young son, Griffin, was born five weeks premature. But I'm pleased to say that Griffin and Tiffany have made the trip to the Fiesta Bowl, wowing all of the doctors, and they said they wanted to see Dad play his last game. Well, that was a great moment because they saw Pop handle the ball for the first time. That pump fake again by Harrington going deep once that home run. Parker's held up. He is overthrown as he collided with Strickland coming out. Well, here's a reminder for you on ESPN Sunday Night Football. Warren Sapp and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers must stop Donovan McNabb and the Eagles to avenge last year's playoff loss in Philadelphia. That is Sunday Night Football, 8.30 Eastern on ESPN. I get the feeling now, Brent, that Joey Harrington feels like he's playing with house money. He's got this big lead. He wants to go deep with the ball. He wants to get one more there. He had a couple short throws right there. The patience that he had in the first half, now he's starting to look deep a little bit too much. 28-7, here's third and eight. Buffaloes need the ball, buff the blitz. Harrington given all kinds of time. Colorado read the screen, no first down. They dropped off and Smith couldn't pick up the necessary yardage and Oregon forced a punt. Sam Wilder, the defensive end, a freshman out of Dallas, making the defensive play for the Buffalo. I think Joey Harrington gave that play away. He dropped way too deeply on that play. You have to settle at five yards and then retreat. He just sprinted back, and I think Colorado smelled it, and he smelled it right. So far, the directional punting and the special team play by Oregon's been superb. Remember, that was a point of emphasis for Bellotti all week. His special teams betrayed him the last time he took on Colorado in a bowl game. That over in Hawaii when Ben Kelly holding the opening kickoff back for a touchdown. Hollowell makes the fair catch inside the 15-yard line. So Harrington and the Ducks lead it by 21 at the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. Timeout. I've trained for this all year. And when it's down to the wire and everyone's tired, I'll still be going strong. I have some strange training methods, but they work for me. I have to keep my edge any way I can. Serious training, baby. It's the best time to get 0% financing on treadmills because now they're all on sale at America's number one fitness store. Sears, proud sponsor of the BCS and the Sears National Champion Football Trophy. Hey, Mike. Oh, hey, Phil. Do you and Maggie ever think about, you know, swapping? Oh, yeah, totally. Your wife is into that? Definitely. And the kids. Kids? Yeah. Okay, here are my keys. Let me get yours. Perfect. We're in! Chrysler Town & Country. With a variety of models, available power sliding side door and lift gate, some people just have to try them all. Hey there. <laughs> Neat. You can dunk, but you can't dip. Your dip is gone, baby. What are you talking about? No dip. Introducing new Tostitos Scoops. Let me tell you something, Bill. I put the hip in chip. Watch this. With the bite-sized, bowl-shaped design for the perfect dip every time. New Tostitos Scoops. Whoa. The dip lover's chip. <laughs> this is my house. Yes, it is. No, this is my house. You guys got to go. <laughs> also great with new Queso Supreme Dip. Hold on. I lost my wallet and my credit card was in it. You do have a Capital One No Hassle card, don't you? Well, don't worry. There's not another human for miles. Worried about losing your credit card? With Capital One's No Hassle card, you're not liable for a penny. Plus, get the nation's lowest long-term fixed rates and no telemarketing. <laughs> So, you think it's right, shooting unarmed people? Well, I don't know if it's right, but it makes a lot more sense than shooting the armed ones. Those guys are dangerous. The job is back Wednesday, January 16th on ABC. Head coach Mike Bellotti told us he was very flattered by the interest shown in Notre Dame. He has a couple of youngsters in high school back in Eugene. He's very comfortable with the lifestyle there. But, ladies and gentlemen, that man someday will wind up in the National Football League. 
This is an outstanding coach. Pesavino and is caught on a slick throw for a first down. Daniel Graham, the senior tight end, Mackey Award winner from Denver. Well, because David Moretti that time was right on Dan, uh, Graham that time. That had to be a slick throw because it was perfect. The two quarterbacks, obviously, Harrington controlling this football game. He's got more weapons. He's got a better offense. Pesavino needs the running game to complement him. And that was our Nokia player comparison, Pesavino and Harrington. They'll bring the chains out here to uh, measure this. The big story of the game, forget the star who is Joy Harrington, but the big story has been the ability of Nick Aliotti's defense to stop the Colorado juggernaut after watching what they accomplished against Nebraska and Texas and then to watch them being held to seven points and only 64 rushing yards. Oh my goodness. Against Nebraska, they must have had that in the first quarter, as I Didn't remember. Chris Brown have that on one run, I think. Remember, he just sprinted in there for a touchdown. Now, of course, you're down by 21. Purify the running back. It makes him more one-dimensional. You've got to play catch-up. Pesavento firing underneath. And I believe he's close to another first down. Is that a face mask? The late flag comes flying in. Matt Brunson, the receiver that time. Webster, the rover on him. That might be the 15 yard or two, the way he, ran, he ran, dragged him down with that face mask, if it is. Got a five yard face mask added on to the end of the run, making a first down. Oregon comes right at him with the blitz. Pesavento stands there, delivers another on target pass. Webster comes across, yanks him down, and uh, that could have gone either way. That could have been a 15-yarder just as easily as a 5-yarder there as he turned him down. Actually, his hand came loose, and that's why he only got the 5 yards. Pesavino hit, and he was not expecting Bowman to be coming. Hard off the corner, Rashad Bowman. The young man from Phoenix. One of six players on this Oregon team who played against Colorado in that bowl game in Hawaii that you did, Brent. This is part of your job as a quarterback to check this guy out. That's your job. You saw Joey Harrington do it. This time, Pesavetto doesn't go through his reads, and he pays the price. He's lucky he didn't fumble. Second down and 16. to a first down, a powerful run with Lewis making this out for the Ducks. Bobby Purify, 900 plus yards rushing this year for Colorado. Chris Brown, Portland Johnson, they have not been able to get these guys free in the secondary like this as they've been regularly doing in the second half of the year. Oh, two third and ones they did not make in the first half. That has really kept them from controlling the ball. The rushing totals today. The biggest surprise of the game. Oregon out rushing Colorado. Big toss. They're going to throw on third down. Wide open. They got Graham. He juggles it. Incomplete. Oh, man. Couldn't throw it any better, and it's going to force Colorado, I believe, to go on fourth down. Down by three touchdowns. You've almost got to go here, don't you? Wide open, Grant is here. Runs right by the safety. Keith Lewis, ball's perfectly thrown, and he just drops it. So Colorado, 0 of 3 now on third and 1. So let's follow Gerard. Gerard and Drum. Oregon knows it. You know it, we know it, and here they come. Chris Brown will be the ball carrier. Drum the lead man. Here it comes. Oregon made him battle for it. It'll depend on the spot. So it appeared from that spot that he's guessed he's got the first down. You can see the man who came over from the line gave him the spot. Sure didn't blow it up, though, did they? Boy, they didn't. <laughs> Second 
Now I'm counting on our yellow line guy on this one, okay? I want, you know, I I can remember a couple of weeks ago when I said this, and I was only off a yard on I, this. I know. I, they, I, usually you have to pass the yellow line for it to be a first down. Do you think? I don't I know. Always thought if you got I, I'll on tell it. you what, it'll be at the most a half a football if he makes it. Here we go. Half Stretch a football. It out. Half a football. Yep. Maybe even less than that. Whew. Oregon made him pay the price inside of five minutes left in the third quarter. Colorado cannot waste time. They've got a strike. Oh, can you believe that Graham would drop a ball no. that wide open? He was running free. I think he was looking at where he was headed for the end zone. The two players that were suspended and weren't allowed to start this game have missed a field goal and dropped a potential touchdown pass. Big story in this game. The fake draw, middle, long, incomplete, and a great reach at the end as Bowman had the coverage on Brunson. If you have enough guts to go man to man with your corners on wide receivers in college football, you can crowd that line of scrimmage. Bowman stride for stride. He thinks he's going to intercept it. Actually, Brunson knocks it away from him right at the end of the play. Second down. Purified. Who's rushed for 24 yards. The running back here on second down. Go, go, go. And he's hit on the handoff. Read perfectly by Kevin Mitchell, the sophomore from Orange, California. It was a finesse play, Brent. It was going to be a reverse. They were trying to bait him to come inside this way. At the end of the play, he just doesn't read it. He goes for the running back. Mitchell just makes the tackle before the reverse guy right here can get the ball. Mitchell's been all over the football field. He's also stepping in as the long snapper on punts today because the regular long snapper came up with an injury. He has never been the long snapper on punts before, but he's a good athlete doing the job. Here's Pesimento. Drew Time goes to coverage, and it's intercepted Smith's second of the game. Smith with his second interception of the game. The senior from Rancho Palos Verdes picks off Pesimento again. Really don't know what Colorado was trying to do here. Two-man route, third and very long. The safety's back in the middle of the field. When you only have two guys out and you have a safety standing there, four guys covering two, you're most of the time going to get this ball picked off. Both interceptions are very costly. Both came on third down. Time out. First step. Mm. Okay, I count to three and then we hang up. Okay? One, two, about it at work.
playing in New York and L.A. everywhere January 18th. How many unarmed men have you shot? Let me think. Uh, this week, six. No, seven. I got one on the way into work this morning. The job is back Wednesday, January 16th on ABC. Shane. Hi, Mom. This is Stephen, my fiance. How you doing, man? <laughs> Happy New Year, Mom. And this tailgate party at USO Camp Casey, Korea is brought to you by Tostitos. And what a beautiful view as the sun sets on the desert here in Arizona. The Tostitos Fiesta Bowl, Oregon, and Joey Harrington leading Colorado 28 7. The story has been the Duck defense. They've limited Colorado to 69 rushing yards. Got him in a passing mode with that score. Now they've been held to 208 yards of offense. And Harrington back on the field goes to work on the clock now with Smith, the ball carrier on first down. Johnson making the stop. Colorado must have the ball back quickly as Oregon begins to bring it down. And Craig Oaks, who gave up his starting job because of an injury to Pesavino, Starts to warm up on the far side, and perhaps we will see him as Pesaveno takes a seat, trailing 28-7. Pesaveno with those two interceptions, uh, winding up his career at Colorado on a down note for the young man, who's a fine young man who hung in there even though he lost his starting job. He's the very epitome of never give up. But things not going his way today. Harrington snaps it off to Howery again. Howery is surrounded at the 25-yard line, and Michael Lewis making another stop. Remind you that coming up next on our triple header, BCS will take you down to the Big Easy, to the Nokia Sugar Bowl. Illinois, winners of the Big Ten, will take on LSU, champions of the SEC. We've had about half the field in the BCS this year. Came into the season unranked. Two of those teams, Illinois and LSU, will meet tonight in the Nokia Sugar Bowl. Here on the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl, Colorado came out of nowhere to win the Big 12. Oregon, though, was one of the favorites all along for the Pac-10. Their only loss this year at the hands of Stanford. As Harrington on a quick pop over the middle of the tight end. And he is out to the 38-yard line for a first down. Justin Peel, the senior from Dublin, California. Love the way Harrington delivers this ball. He just doesn't lay it out there. He rockets this ball. He knows he's got a hot. As he backs out, he just gives it to his tight end. Another first down. Doesn't throw it off balance. Fires it right at those numbers. Harrington receives more punishment when he plays the piano than he has today against this well, defense. They're, blitzing. they're just one step ahead. Blitz him, hot. You gotta cover him. You gotta move up and cover him. Colorado's playing 10 out. yards off. First down. Here's the toss now. Smith runs for the corner, and there is Lewis. He has been a standout, even though Colorado trails it 28-7. And aerial coverage of today's game is provided by Tostitos. A sellout crowd, an early sellout, about the second day after tickets went on sale. Oregon even sent down for more tickets, and a lot of Colorado fans have made their way down from the Denver area. So far, they have not had a lot to cheer for. They trail it 28 to 7. We're coming down to the final minute of the third quarter. Harrington and the Ducks have dominated both sides of the line of scrimmage here today. They bring the end around. To the 45 yard line and it'll be third down and about oh make it three or four now coming up nice block by ontario smith just outside of your picture here is going to come out and get the last man on the line of scrimmage does a nice job here getting massini right there number two. Oh, boom perfect that springs it for the yardage positive yards instead of negative yards well coached doing his job Injured player being tended to Colorado Buffalo down Gary as we think about the uh, the game itself and the entire game what surprises you the most we had expected a high scoring game with the both teams trading punches and the Colorado has been unable to score for Barnett well there's no doubt I mean Colorado thought they could mash them. they felt that they could knock them off the ball they knew they didn't have a great passing game they knew their own corners might not be able to stand up they thought they could control the clock and take the pressure off their quarterback that's been the story of the game. They can't run the ball against this Oregon Duck defense. Aliotti, the defensive coordinator, and he was very open 
very open about the game plan. In fact, he could have called Barnett and told him, because he told everybody else. He said, we're going to man the corners about 75% of the time. We're going to put eight and nine, and then we're going to maintain those gaps. We don't want the cutback runs that yep, Colorado absolutely. had against Nebraska and Texas. We're going to change the front from time to time. It was a very open game plan. Nothing secretive. Here's Harrington. He's got another one for a first down at midfield. Joey Harrington put it in the hands of Parker. So when you go back to the matchup of the defensive coordinator, Aliotti, against Watson, the offensive coordinator, it has been lopsided here today. Nick Aliotti has had Watson's number as far as programming the defense is concerned. Look at this space. You've got to crowd the line of scrimmage. It's third and five. You can't give him that easy throw. He'll pick your part all day like he has. We've come to the end of the third. Oregon, one quarter away for arguing for at least half a national championship. Back after this message and a word from our ABC stations. How many 4x4s can you really take off-road? I suppose we better go give these guys a hand, huh? With its patented four-wheel drive system, Jeep Liberty makes every day Independence Day. No laughing this time, guys. Yeah, it's called in Salt Lake City. Welcome to McDonald's. We're sending our best to Salt Lake City, too, to serve the world's best athletes. Congratulations to the over 400 winners of McDonald's Global Crew Competition. Welcome to McDonald's. McDonald's, a worldwide Olympic partner. The PCS on ABC continues when Florida battles ACC champ Maryland. The FedEx Orange Bowl, tomorrow night at 8, 5 Pacific on ABC. We're Californians. We run. We fly. We drive. We do dessert. We toast. We indulge. Uh -huh. We stargate. We believe. We believe in Nirvana. We rock! And we've got our own motto. Ah! So get out there. Get out there. Get out there. Because all work and no play. Makes Jack a dull boy. Adios. So long. Goodbye. Goodbye. Nissan's goodbye sales event just got a lot better. Now get 0.9% financing on nearly every Nissan. Plus get $500 bonus cash from Nissan. O1s and O2s get great financing and $500 bonus cash. With deals like these, it's a great time to get a new Nissan. Hurry to your Bay Area Nissan dealers before the goodbye event says buy for good. Nissan. Driven. Dirty Rotten Scoundrels, tonight at 9 on ABC7. This is the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. You never know what my partner, Gary Daniels, was going <laughs> to kind of come up with during those commercials. He said, Brian, Harrington might be so good, the Texans will have to take him. Uh, Houston Texans, <laughs> right? They, I, I, it's hard to pass this guy up. He's in complete control. He's got a wonderful offense and a defense that really can't match up with yeah, you were really impressed. I haven't seen you this impressed with a quarterback all season long. Command of the game, knowing what he wants to do, and having the ability to wait and wait and take the big play when it gets there. That's the key. He's thrown for 311 yards, three touchdowns, facing a first and ten as we start the fourth quarter. And breaking free again this time, it is Smith. Remember earlier, it was Morris for 49 yards on that play in which he rolled over a prone defender and then dashed the rest of the way for the touchdown in the third quarter. Brent, when you talk to your friends, the, those, those odds makers my friends, and stuff, yes, okay? They are my friends. What were the odds that Oregon would outrush Colorado in this football game? Did you get that off, one? Off the board, my friends. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's some things I don't even bother to ask for because I think it's ridiculous, you know, but here it is. I mean, 127 to 69, Oregon has outrushed them and leads it 28 to 7. 
Another underdog go coming through for us, Gary. The Buffaloes were favored. Harrington pumps it into nothing but wide open space. Willis, who has been one of his big receivers here today. Joey Harrington's wondering why people in the Pac-10 don't run this off this defense all the time. A 10-yard cushion, they're going to run it again. They're going to run the smash route. He goes out five yards, he stops, he allows the deep guy to just hook there and just take an easy pitch and catch. Harrington says, I didn't know the Big 12 was this easy. I could have won the Heisman if I'd have played in the Big 12. And those humans were right after all. We should have been <laughs> passing here. That's what they're thinking. First down and 10. Ball on the 36. There's a fake from Harrington. The penalty flag. Middles open incomplete. But there is a penalty flag at the 35-yard line. Check in with Jack Aru, Jack. Brent, Gary, do you remember when we met with the Oregon coaches and specifically with Jeff Tedford when he told us the most important tape that this team reviewed all, all in preparation for this game was that Big 12 championship? They saw some of the chicanery that... Vince Okru tried to play against Texas. And Jeff said, told us, he said, hey, we're not surprised. We know what we're expecting. Yeah, exactly. And Jeff Tedford, whom you saw there, is headed to Berkeley in the University of California. Sort of interesting because one of the stories we pursued early on with Bellotti is why did you keep Tedford here and not turn him loose? You know, if you talk to Bobby Bowden, he probably wishes a year ago that Mark Rick had gone early to Georgia after he was hired. But Bellotti said, we talked it over. Jeff said he wanted to stay with the youngsters who he had helped bring in to Eugene. He hired his assistant coaches early on. We thought he had Berkeley well taken care of, so certainly we welcomed him. And then he'll name a new offensive coordinator sometime, or probably next week, as Smith powers his way to the 35-yard line. Guess who has the most completions, most completed passers ever in a Tostina Fiesta Bowl? Now, I know you don't know, but it's a good friend of yours, Gary. So I know you're going to be able to guess it for huh. me. 1985. Bernie Kosar. There you are, yeah, Miami absolutely. against UCLA. I knew you'd get it. He had to play in the game against Boston College and then come right out here. Came right here. Right? Remember that? Oh, yeah. They played in that game. So 31 is the number, and Harrington's sitting on a 25 right now with 13 minutes to go. He said, all right, Mr. Kosar, one closer at the 30-yard line with that completion to Jason Willis again. So we, uh, we've talked about Dan Fouts and Monday night. He'll be there for the season finale of Monday Night Football along with Al and Dennis. And you'll see the Vikings and the Ravens. Now, if I have this correct, the Vikings are long gone. And yes, the Ravens haven't gone. wrapped up a playoff post. Right? Do I have it right? The first half, I know you do. <laughs> <laughs> Third down, as George Hill will be joining the, uh, the Monday Night Crew. He shakes his head affirmative that that's the way it is. So uh, if the Ravens can shut down Randy Moss, Here's Pia. That up. He catches way. him on third down, the tight end. Yeah, he sure does. Harrington pump fake, look back. Head and cover. He's going to go for the end zone. Going to go for one more. Over to his receiver. And Strickland out of bounds. Made the catch out of bounds. So fourth down coming up for the Ducks here with 12 minutes to go. Why well, they keep coming at you, don't they? Mm. That number three jersey, as you've been pointing out, Brent. I mean, that's as clean as a kicker's jersey after the game. Absolutely. I mean, just take a look at number three. He can put it down right. That's as dirty as he's been all day. He can put, put the one in, knee down he can for frame Siegel. it right after this game. He can just put it in a frame. 47 yarder. Slips it through just like that. His long 46. He's got a new one at 47. And it's 31 7. Timeout. You can slow down investing. You can stop investing entirely. But you can't stop daughters from falling in love. Bye, Daddy. Which is why your Morgan Stanley financial advisor will never let you lose sight of what you're investing for. One of the coolest things about Rocky was how he did his training. 
on traditional methods. We'd be pounding on pot roast, drinking raw egg smoothies, chasing the chicken, all that crazy stuff to make himself tougher. That'd be fit for sequels. Ford F-150, built to last and come in first. Built Ford tough. Used to be a time when folks cared about this neighborhood. Used to be a time when people took pride in who they were. I think that time is coming back. Across the nation, young people are transforming rundown buildings into housing for homeless and low-income families. And in the process of building for others, they uncover their own amazing strength. Youth Build, rebuilding communities, transforming lives. For his first attempt, a 360 Tomahawk. Introducing new Tostito Scoops. Amazing. And now the alley-oop reverse. With the bite-sized, bowl-shaped design. Oh, my. And what everyone's been waiting for, the two-handed thunder. For the perfect dip every time. Oh, the judges have to be impressed. New Tostito Scoops. The dip lover's chip. <laughs> also great with new Queso Supreme Dip. Cameras are rolling. Everyone's watching. 50 grand is on the line. Now, try to control your heartbeat. The chair coming to EBC. Another sellout crowd here at the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. 74,118 and 16. The last 17 Tostitos Fiesta Bowl games have been complete sellouts. One of the great settings during the bowl season and this of course hosting the BCS game next year the championship game of the BCS will be played Colorado being upset 31 to 7 Hollowell being sealed in the corner coming out from the 10 looking daylight slips and down at the 20 yard line well let's remind you about the job a new year and a new season but still the same bad attitude Dennis Leary back at the job starting Wednesday January 16th at 9 30 8 30 central right here on ABC and what a job this defensive unit of Oregon has done against Colorado and Craig Oaks checks in at quarterback the sophomore from Boulder replaces Pesavento they drop him back in the shotgun Intercepted on his first pass, and he's done it again. Steve Smith, three interceptions on the day. He will be the defensive player of the game as he picks off Craig Oaks, throwing his first pass of the game. And Harrington and the Ducks are in business again. Crossing route. Oaks probably fired up, got a lot of juice in that arm, wants to show things. As he throws the ball, he just throws it too high, just tipped, and there's the freebie. There's the freebie right there. Smith gets his third one, and that was just a ball poorly thrown, and Colorado pays the price. Marcus Houston, number 21, had checked in for the first time, and it was off his hand, the running back for Colorado. So now Morris inside the 25 yard I remember now both Morris and Smith have scored touchdowns Morris rushing and he's gained 88 yards on the ground he's the leading rusher but Smith took that shovel pass yeah. from Joy Harrington one of the three touchdown passes that Harrington has thrown here today in this game so coming down toward the 11 20 mark leading at 31 7 with a second down and nine I keep throwing the ball by I put points on the board, points on the board. I want everybody to see how many we scored against Colorado if I'm going to throw it. And here comes Harrington moving hard left, fires back complete. It'll be first and goal at the five-yard line. And it took five black shirts to bring Justin Peel down that time. And Oregon going to make a statement now. 19 more yards, and this is a team that wanted to be in Pasadena. What a system. Half roll, throwback. Get the linebackers moving and gun it. You see he doesn't lay it up. He just guns it right there. Big body in front of a small body. What a nice system. What a magnificent quarterback Joey Harrington is. They close the deal here, and they'll be cheering hard for Nebraska. Because rest assured, the media will anoint Oregon the winner of the Associated Press Bowl with what they're doing here today. Colorado was seven points. Remember, they scored 62 on Nebraska. 
Hill goes back to that fullback spot, and they'll run in Morris. Morris carries four-yard line that time. A nice tackle by Dabdu. He's a freshman from the state of Louisiana. Going to be a good football player up in Boulder. The fullback Josh Line comes in from the Oregon sideline with this play. Suck it down and goal for Harrington. He's got his fullback in there. He could be the lead blocker for Morris. Gonna throw. Harrington in trouble. Outrunning Johnson. Fires. Touchdown! Justin Peel, the fourth touchdown pass of the game for Joey Harrington. And what a merry tune he's playing here today against Colorado. Same play that Colorado used against Fresno State. Fullback in the black, tight end deep. It's not there, so what does the tight end peel do? Finds a different area, and buying time, Harrington comes back to him and makes the throw. You know the two he's playing right now? Houston Texans, Houston Texans. <laughs> <laughs> There's the extra point being added. Harrington saluting the crowd during each home game. 50 friends and relatives chartered a bus and drove from Portland. They were there to see Joey Harrington, and are they ever enjoying this? Time out. Schultz never knew there were tunnels. He didn't want to know, but you're missing the point of the story. A young entrepreneur engrossed in a Hogan's Heroes marathon neglects to ship an important package. Did he know about the radio and the coffee pot? He knew nothing. Now focus. Like a swallow returning to Capistrano, he instinctively heads to FedEx. They give his small business package the big business treatment, and another hobgoblin of success falls victim to FedEx efficiency. What is a hobgoblin? A gnome. A mean, angry gnome. You've made us America's number one choice in cars and trucks for 15 straight years. We've been together through thick and thin, at work and at play. Thanks, America. Okay, good news. That broadband thing we all want? Got it figured out. Honey, you call the phone company. Tracy, you're digging the trench. Shovel's in the garage. I'm going up on the roof to assess satellite possibilities. Timmy, check out the schematics. Appreciate it. Let's go! Broadband! We know how you feel, and that's why Circuit City offers one-stop high-speed internet access. You can find what's available where, compare options, and arrange installation. Circuit City, we're with you. Yeah, we can get broadband at Circuit City. Uh, oh. The Tostitos Fiesta Bowl is ABC Sports exclusive. Brought to you by Ford, America's number one choice for 15 straight years. Circuit City, we know how you feel. That's why we're here. Circuit City, we're with you. FedEx, Ground International Online or Express, there's a FedEx for that. And your Morgan Stanley financial advisor, who will never let you lose sight of what you're investing for. Joey Harrington has thrown for 350 yards here today. He's 28 of 42, four touchdowns, one interception way back in the first half. Wrapping up a fabulous career at Oregon. The Offensive Player of the Year this year in the Pac-10. Here is Hollowell. He'll try to light a fire for the Buffalo. The 20. Cuts loose, tries to find another crease. And makes the most of it to the 31-yard line. Well, Joey Harrington, also a piano player. And what a tune he's played for us today, huh?
stuff. Piano teacher once said when he was a youngster, what a great left hand he's got. Well, ma'am, his right hand's not bad here either today. Let me tell you, 9.20 to go, and Joey Harrington, who saw his likeness on a New York skyscraper to the cost of $250,000, and those backers knew what they were bragging about. This young man is as good as it gets in college football. I think he earned it back. Did he get into a $13 million bowl game? I think it's a good investment. Absolutely. <laughs> Oak's still in the game. Watch out. What a hit McCoy takes underneath that time. Guess who? Yes, Kevin Mitchell. He's been all over the field. Great linebackers on this Oregon team. We, You know, we're going to rave about Joy Harrington because he put the offensive numbers up. But, folks, you can't say enough about this defense holding Colorado to only seven points here today. That's a first down. I'm well, not surprised that Oregon has thrown the ball effectively against Colorado. Exactly. I just thought Colorado would be able to put on 35 points on the other side of the field, too. I agree with you, Kurt. I really thought both offenses would go yes. up and down the field and finish. And, of course, we were so impressed because we watched Colorado dominate well, Nebraska and Texas in person. But Colorado didn't have the turnovers in this game like they had against Nebraska. Oh, the gamble doesn't pay off. Here comes McCoy. Oregon got a little greedy that time, and uh, House McCoy, money. exactly. The house money. <laughs> house money. <laughs> I'm going to go for it. They're going for it. <laughs> a little more glory, and that's a 28-yard gain. And Oaks will try to finish off here with eight and a half minutes. See, We've had 45 points scored in this game so far. See, Bowman's a veteran. He knows Brent Musburger's doing the game. He wants Brent to do one of him <laughs> running down the field with an interception. You've done him before, right? Oh, a couple yeah. times? He's a dandy. Love to talk to him, or I should say, love to listen to him. Yes. <laughs> he was so half. focused, such a great leader in practice the other day. Yeah, isn't he, though? Yep. Here comes Oaks. Yeah. Before he can release the football by Mallard. And now it is time for our FedEx ground air stats. Rushing yards today. That's not a mistake, folks. The Ducks have outrushed the herd. As far as passing is concerned, no contest. All Joey Harrington for 350. Out of bounds, Graham, the intended receiver. I think there's a penalty flag down on the far side here at the eight minute mark. So referee Ford's uh, last game. You know, he made a big call. When you go back yes. to a big moment in this yeah. game, uh, Colorado had a touchdown call back because they said Pesavino had stepped over the line of scrimmage and it was an illegal forward pass. And uh, clearly that will be the controversial play of this game. So we're at the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl, a sellout crowd here in Tempe, Arizona. The lights are turned on, Colorado and Oregon, and you know the storyline. The winner here will root hard. The penalty is declined, third down. The winner here will root hard for Nebraska to upset Miami in the Rose Bowl when they play for the BCS championship. Then they can hope the media would crown them at least co-national champions along with Nebraska. And Oregon has made a strong, powerful statement so far here today. But nothing has figured in college football this year. It has been a wacky, wacky season. Oaks is in trouble, and he's going down. Down at the 48-yard line, Keith Lewis, the free safety on the blitz. It was Mallard, <coughs> excuse me, Mallard first, Lewis the second time, and it is just a disaster. Trying to throw the ball, Colorado is not made for this type of game. Even though Oaks threw 50 times against Fresno State, Oregon is not Fresno State. Third down and a 25, and of course, right after our game, the Nokia Sugar Bowl, Illinois and LSU. Coming your way. After the play was over, unsportsmanlike conduct against the defense, a 15-yard penalty will bring up fourth down. There must have been a celebration after the snack by uh, after the sack by Lewis there as he pranced out after the sack. The officials obviously thought Mark Gastineau was back on the field. Inside line for you NFL fans out there. I'm sure let me That's way back. Talking That's about <laughs> how old is that guy? <laughs> well, 
First and ten this quarter is brought to you by Monster.com. And Oregon has been a monster to deal with here today. Fourth down, and Ford whistled it before the snap. So he'll come on up here, and they'll sort this out. Well, we talked about what both teams had to do, and I think have it, keep it turned out to be the biggest. When you have the ball, you got to keep it against a good offensive football team. Three turnovers from Colorado. Stay balanced, okay, but not being able to run it. You know, I was two out of three here. Oh, you were? That two out of three. That's pretty good. You, you were very good. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anybody who follows college football expected to see Oregon shut down Colorado's rushing game here today. Now it's fourth down and eight, and here's Oaks. There's Graham, first down, jumps over, and he'll be Oaks forced out of bounds inside the 10-yard line where it'll be first down and goal. Mallard forcing the All-America tight end out. Mallard got kicked by his own guy here. Number 18, watch him bump into it. I think it's Mitchell that he bumps into, and that's what allows Graham to get to the outside, and Graham catches him. You know, I thought it was two big plays in this game. The drop pass by Graham, and then the call on the touchdown play. That was 28-7 when that touchdown, maybe it's a football game from 28-14. Yeah, good point. Graham, the leading receiver for the Buffaloes here today. Fumble on the snap. Oaks dives back on it. And it'll be second down and goal. Graham, six catches for 64 yards. Good day's work out of your tight end. Parker for Oregon caught nine balls for 162 yards here today. Craig Oaks is the future for Colorado. I'm not so sure if it was the other way around. If Pesavento was a sophomore and Oaks was a senior, I think we'd still be seeing Pesavento. But you want to take advantage, give Oaks some playing time for his future, for Colorado's future next year. Second down and goal. Houston's still a running back, and he didn't help his quarterback out much that time. The young running back, number 21, unable to pick up some of the rushmen from Oregon that time, and they just swarmed all over the quarterback. Kevin Mitchell, Olshansky is there, and uh, 21 have to prove on his blocking skills a little bit. Only one returning starter came back to this defensive line for Oregon this year. That was McEwen. And really, one of their best playmakers, Tetterton, has barely, barely played in this football game because of a bad ankle. They still have been able to hold up all game against the line. Five seconds on that play clock. Oaks has to hurry. He's down to two. Didn't get it off. Oaks didn't check the clock. That's going to cost him five yards right now. And, uh, Let's remind everybody that on Sunday, January 27th, Stephen King, the modern master of suspense, will bring the terror home. Rose Red. Sunday, January 27th, only on ABC. You like those scary deals, Gary? Um, when there's a lot of people around by myself, <laughs> not really. It's better than playing against the New York Giants, though, when Lawrence Taylor was there. <laughs> <laughs> Third down the ball back on the 21 yard line. Deep drop Oaks gonna try to fire it. High incomplete. Oregon's coverage also has been outstanding yep. here today. Yep. They have closed and they've helped those corners. And Webster, the rover man, back there. You just can't say enough about Aliotti's overall defensive package here today well, has been terrific. You don't win the Big Ten championship, even though this is the second last Pac-10, excuse me, Pac-10 championship without being able to play some pass defense. They could have won the Big Ten with this team, too. <laughs> You're right. Fourth <laughs> <laughs> down, and Flores, and he kicks the field goal. So it is 38-10 after the 39-yard field goal. 53 left. Time out. Here we go. You gotta love Johnny Cash. The man in black's the kind of guy who doesn't need sparkly outfits, synchronized dance moves. Johnny just bleeds every note till he brings the house down. I'm just saying, don't send a boy band to do a man's job. Ford F-Series Super Duty. 
built to toe the line. Built Ford tough. That's the way to get it done. When you can check your email, work in your office and spreadsheet programs, surf the internet, and listen to music files on the way to the office, what are you going to do when you actually get to the office? A Nokia communicator. The ability to get to work before you get to work. Nokia. Connecting people. slow down investing. You can stop investing entirely. There was one man who had a funny hat. But you can't stop curious toddlers from one day becoming college and freshmen. There was a small man that someone put him in a bird cage. Which is why your Morgan Stanley financial advisor will never let you lose sight of what you're investing for. And... New Orleans rocks on New Year's Day. Big Ten champ Illinois meets SEC champ LSU. The Nokia Sugar Bowl, coming up next on ABC. Now, the Nebraska fans are all over. The other night, I'm walking here in Tempe, and a couple of them are on bicycles, and they're taunting, taunting the Colorado fans. They're pedaling by and saying, hey, you guys wish you were in Pasadena, don't you? Ha, ha, ha. And off they pedal into the night. And here are a couple of others with the old Eric Crouch banner. And, of course, we'll see Eric Crouch in Nebraska Thursday night against favored Miami. Time out. Being your friend is always an adventure. Yes, it is, isn't it? Edmund Dantes had the perfect life until his best friend framed him. You're under arrest. There will be justice. Now, he will train to fight. Good. Too good. Dare to escape and take back his life. Jim Caviezel, Guy Pearce, Richard Harris. How did you ever call yourself my friend? The Count of Monte Cristo. Rated PG-13. Starts January 25th. You've made us America's number one choice in cars and trucks for 15 straight years. We've been together through thick and thin, at work and at play. Thanks, America. <laughs> can you believe that? Nick, you can dunk, but you can't dip. Your dip is gone, baby. What are you talking about? No dip. Introducing new Tostito Scoops. Let me tell you something, Bill. I put the hip in chip. Watch this. With the bite-sized, bowl-shaped design for the perfect dip every time. New Tostito Scoops. Whoa. The dip lover's chip. <laughs> this is my house. Yes, it is. No, this is my house. You guys got to go. <laughs> also great with new Queso Supreme Dip. The greatest games in college football are on ESPN Classic. That includes the best games from this past season. Friday, 26 hours of the college football games that made 2001 unforgettable. It starts 9 p.m. Eastern Friday on ESPN Classic. Get ESPN Classic by calling your cable or satellite provider. This tailgate party at the Ramstein Air Force Base in Germany brought to you by Tostitos. Good mug of that German beer and some of those Tostitos scoops taste real good. Along about now, 5.47 to go. Pat Brome and Oregon expecting perhaps an onside kick here at the 5.47. Not to be. For Oregon. It'll be fielded at the 13-yard line by Amundsen. And Amundsen down about the 19-yard line. Now it is time for the fourth tough play of the game. And, folks, here is Morris on this 49-yard touchdown run. 
appears to be down about the 22-yard line. He'll roll over a defender. His knees will not touch the ground. He dashes in. And, folks, the 49 yards right now equals the entire rushing output for Colorado after the sacks are taken off. That's right. Officially, Colorado has been held to 49 yards, and that's what Morris had on the four tough play of the game. Well, I've heard people predict that Colorado was going to score 50. They didn't even rush for 50 in this game. Smith the runner this time, and he makes it to the 32-yard line. And Fluellen, fine young defensive tackle, makes the stop. Let's check in with Jack Aru. Jack? Well, guys, Joey Harrington is not the first Harrington to play quarterback at Oregon. They still toss the ball around now and again. It was Joey's dad, John, the quarterback the Ducks back in the 60s. And if it's anything the way my father talks, he'll probably insist that Joey is a cheap imitation. And on the day he was born, Jack, a letter of intent arrived for John. <laughs> and so Joey had that in his crib. He was a duck from the day he was born. And uh, grew up in Portland, Oregon. Just as fine a young man as you'd ever want to be around. 447 to go now and Joey Harrington and the Ducks making an argument for at least the Associated Press crown as line runs it straight ahead to the 36 yard line. Bellotti and the Ducks now working on the clock trying to bring it down as quickly as they can. Well should Nebraska knock off Miami. I, I think a split title would be fair. I think it would be fair. I think Oregon, Oregon taking half of it. Nebraska taking half of it. I think that'd be fair for everyone. No quarrel here. This is a good-looking football team. Yes, Daniels. it is. Yes, it is. You know, that Mr. Ba Mr. Jackson fellow who's going to be doing the Rose Bowl, he keeps us out of that time zone, you know? Yes. So <laughs> this is a pleasure for us to see Joy Harrington of the Ducks here. First down and 10, 416. Yeah, Tim Brandt, Keith Jackson will be bringing you the uh, Rose Bowl presented by AT&T. And coming up next, we've got the Nokia Sugar Bowl down there in New Orleans, the Big Easy, Illinois and LSU. Gary, what's your thoughts about Illinois well, and LSU? Kirk Kittner is one of the three best quarterbacks in college football. We've seen what a good quarterback can do. This type of game plan, he gets hot, anything can happen. So we'll take a break. Oregon headed for a win in the Tostitas Fiesta Bowl. Time out. One of the coolest things about Rocky was how he did his training on traditional methods. Where he'd be pounding on pot roast, drinking raw egg smoothies, chasing the chicken, all that crazy stuff to make himself tougher. That'd be fit for sequels. Ford F-150, built to last and come in first. Built Ford tough. AT&T data and IP networks rely on technology that speeds data around the world instantly to keep your employees in the loop. And multiple layers of security to keep everyone else out. On guard. You can slow down investing. You can stop investing entirely. But you can't stop daughters from falling in love. Bye, Daddy. Which is why your Morgan Stanley financial advisor will never let you lose sight of what you're investing for. You're watching the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl on ABC. Well, Colorado enjoyed a great run, capturing the Big 12, beating up on Nebraska, up in Boulder, Colorado. As far as Oregon is concerned, they have lost only once. So Oregon's only loss this year came at the hands of Stanford, and two punts were blocked by Stanford in that game. And it brings up a story that we're going to relate as, you sh as we show you that videotape. And this is whistle before the snap. The up back for Oregon was a backup quarterback, number 10. And on the first one, he doesn't get his man. But Pilati is told that a guard missed the block. 
So they leave the young man in. And the quarterback gets overpowered again. And Stanford blocks the second punt. So after that, the special teams coach, Robin Ross, changed the up back. And he has done an outstanding job here today because Bellotti was really concerned about his special teams coming into this game. So it's just amazing when you go back in sport and, and plays happen for Colorado. It's always the something. little it's things, always the little right. things that go on yep. that you learn about later. Second down and 13 now. And, uh, and Joey Harrington, whenever you walk up and interview him and talk to him, it's the smile that captivates you. And I said, Joey, how come you're so optimistic? What's that all about? I don't say I just have fun. You know, when you start getting real negative and you start getting down on yourself, that's when the game's not fun anymore. I play the game because I enjoy it, because I enjoy the interaction with my teammates, and I, I love being out there in front of all the people. It's just a fun game to play. It's infectious, folks. Yep. Modest, great arm, understands the offense, team player, great leader, come back in the fourth quarter. I, you know, I, I hate to say it. I mean, this is the type of guy you build a franchise around in the National Football League. Exactly, and uh, Gary, if we go back now, and this will be the fourth year for the BCS championship to be played. The first one was here. That was back in 99. Tennessee of the SEC. Then it was Florida State of the ACC. And a year ago, of course, in the Orange Bowl, the FedEx Orange Bowl, Oklahoma of the Big 12. Now, Nebraska, of course, could come along. Or if Miami takes care of business and they're favored, then the Big East, it'll be four different conferences in four years with BCS championships. And Ontario Smith, you know, here's a young man you got to feel good for, too. Smith had a little problem with marijuana down in Tennessee and uh, transferred up here to Oregon, and he's made himself into a solid citizen up there, and you got to be happy for the young man as you are for all of the players here on the Oregon Ducks here uh, this evening. They've lost only one game, and they're going to make a statement. And should Nebraska win, you can look for the Associated Colorado. Press media folks to vote Oregon Colorado. number one, because remember, the AP had them number two behind Miami. It's the computers that like Nebraska a little bit better. Doing everything. Look at this pass. Hollowell driven back to the 15-yard line, almost like a little decoy. And he is down at about the 18-yard line off the Arroyo punt, and that was Mallard downfield making the special team stop. Well, we've got some folks we want to thank, and, and what a great year this has been for Gary, Jack, and me. Uh, one underdog after another. The executive producer of ABC Sports is Howard Katz. Howard, Happy New Year. And, of course, to our coordinating producer of ABC College Football, our producer today down at the truck, Bob Goodrich, who's working along our fine director, Larry Camp. It is complete. It's short of that 40 yard line. The technical director, Monty Poling, associate producer, and a new papa, Mitch Green. Happy New Year to the Greens. Our associate director, Brian Faye, did an outstanding job all year. Our director of production, Bob Toms. Our production assistants, Kurt Thomas and Tim McDermott. The computer stats man, Anthony Holman, as Oaks throws low this time. Technical manager, Mark Towie. Our production manager, Christy Bravi. Our senior audio man, Wendell Stevens, and we'll see him when we move into ACC basketball. Over here on stats, George Hill, spotter Brian Mobilson, and uh, our stage manager who did a fine job today. Chris Blankenship, thanks to one and all, and uh, Happy New Year to the families of all our cameramen and crew. Uh, what a year we have enjoyed covering college football as Oregon closes in on a Tostitos Fiesta Bowl triumph here. 2.53, and I'm sure the crowd from Oregon starting to chant, we're number one. We're number one. Short drop by Oaks. And complete to the 42-yard line. And Graham again, the leading receiver, with his seventh grab of the game. And a reminder to stay tuned for the Ford mid-game report featuring scores and highlights with John Saunders and Terry Bowden from Anaheim, California. They'll set the stage for the Nokia Sugar and the Rose Bowl presented by AT&T on Thursday night. And then don't forget, tomorrow night, the FedEx Orange Bowl features Florida against Maryland. And, of course, that game will be sold out largely because of the Gators and their and their fans that will be down there to see uh, Brock Berlin, perhaps, as the starting quarterback. And now 
Some of the young defensive players who played a whale of a game being brought off the field to a huge ovation here in Tempe. As Oaks has got Graham again for a first down to the 41 yard line inside of two minutes and doesn't take long, does it, folks? It doesn't take long for the t shirts to come out. Take a little chance before the game, you print them up, you make money after. That's capitalism, <laughs> isn't it? It is. It doesn't work, you gotta eat them. It certainly is. I was out there walking a few blocks with Willie, a ticket broker from Denver. I said, how's business? He said, well, it was good early. It was kind of slow this afternoon. I said, well, give it time, but just before the kickoff. Oaks fires deep and out of bounds. Oaks passes. Check in with my buddy, Jack Aru. Jack, I'm going to miss you next week, buddy. Yeah, I'll miss you, too. We'll get together. You want to know where Joey Harrington's going to be Thursday, Brent? No, not in front of a TV watching ABC's coverage of the AT&T Rose Bowl. He and his family have decided to attend the Rose Bowl. I'll guarantee you that he will be one duck rooting for the Cornhuskers. And we'll have to tell uh, Mark Loomis and uh, Patrick McManus of our crew to find him. He'd be a pretty good cutaway over there for Keith. Yeah, that's going to be a very interesting ball game. Second down. Hollowell, the motion receiver. And Oaks is going down at the 41-yard line. Daryl Wright, defensive end from Fort Pierce, Florida. Well, you see Florida. You know, the one thing about the BCS, folks, Gary and I have figured out a way just to shorten it. Just find the champion of the state of Florida and then pick the best every team to year, take him on. Gotcha. Yeah. Amen there. Oaks, very rusty to me. He, he just looks like he's just not used to playing. Obviously. That's Houston, the receiver. The running back at the 30. And that's a first down, stopping the clock at 113. So we get a look at the red shirt freshman out of Denver. And it has been a long, tough afternoon for Barnett and his staff. This is not what they expected. Being held to 10 points here today. And I don't think any excuses either. He said his team was ready. He said they had great practices, very focused. He's never been around a team as focused as this one. Just got flat out beat. Now, I, I think the Oregon coaches if I had to give a special game ball, obviously you've got Joy Harrington, Smith with his three interceptions, but I'd give a special game ball to the coaching staff at Oregon. I think this is about as well prepared as I've ever seen a team meeting a team that is on an enormous high. I think Bellotti and his entire coaching staff really had the answers. I mean, they really shut that offensive line down here today with that gap control defense of Aliotis. And Colorado was never able to respond. They didn't counter back off that. So coaching is so huge in any level of football. That's why these guys demand millions of dollars. Second down and 10. Underneath on the pass. To the 18-yard line, that's Cormier. I also think that Colorado lost a lot of confidence with that deep pass early in the game, that 79-yarder. They just seemed to net back off from there in the secondary. Defensively, they just lost all confidence in their game plan. Well, you look back at the Nebraska game, and of course, Nebraska's not built that way. They don't throw the ball deep on it. And McCoy almost free to the five-yard line. 30 seconds left here. And it'll be first and goal, and maybe the Buffs will put up another touchdown here. There's Kevin Mitchell back there making another stop. And in Texas' case, Chris Sims made all those first-half mistakes and put the Longhorns in a duel. But here today, Joy Harrington, they didn't rattle him. Their change-ups didn't fool him, and he was right on the money, except for one high bad throw incomplete at the goal line. Now 23 seconds to go. But remember, Applewhite almost, that game was 39-37. Applewhite, a more experienced quarterback, was able to throw the ball very effectively Good against point. Colorado. Good point. I think he threw one uh, right away from yes. a touchdown. And so I, I think there's holes in this secondary for Colorado. This is not a vintage secondary for Colorado. Nebraska just couldn't take advantage of it, and Texas too many turnovers. Second down and goal for Oaks. Got a man. Touchdown, and it was easy. A mistake on Graham, and he was running free. Yeah, that's 15 yards. Absolutely, Daniel Graham. You're getting beat 38 to 16, and you're going to dunk the ball. Yeah. 
his last game as an amateur. So they'll bring the try back because of the celebration. Bellotti's got the victor's T-shirt out. Final 18 seconds, thanking some of his fellows, especially the seniors. And a fine senior class. Nano exudes class. He's always a pleasure to be around. Hold on. Missed no good. Extra distance cost him a point. Daniel Graham's a wonderful football player. He's going to be a tremendous NFL player. But tonight, Oregon dominated the football game from start to finish. Pullback out in the flat. Daniel Graham goes deep to the back of the end zone, wide open. Oaks delivers it perfectly, and give it a little bit of a dunk shot at the end of it. And, uh, well, he got 15 yards. Gets up in the air pretty good, though. <laughs> <laughs> Wish we would have got up in the air and caught that one earlier in the game. Yeah, held on. Remember that? Dude? Yes, he actually I do. Had the yes, ball. I do remember that one. Also remember that he missed Kirkby, too. There's a there's a nice moment. Harrington and Bowman down there. Close by Jack Aroot. This is the dropped ball by the Mackey Award winner. He's got away from him. No excuses. In fact, there are no excuses in this game. This no. was Oregon's football game from beginning to end. They put 497 yards of offense up there. We think of Joey Harrington. He has now thrown 10 touchdown passes on this field in his last two games. Remember, he got a half dozen a season ago against Arizona State. And so he loves playing here. Almost 800 yards. Maybe the Cardinals should take him. Oh, they got Jake. Oh, that's right. Here's the onside kick, and it'll be downed with 17 seconds to go. And now uh, the uh, Ducks can, uh, can come on out here and uh, wrap this one up. I'm going to let the backup quarterback go in there and take the knee. Well, we mentioned that the Oregon line at the top of our broadcast had given up only 11 sacks all season long. Today, they gave up zero Zip. sacks, as in zero. And I can only remember pressure once when I thought it was meaningful pressure. And I think that's way back in the first quarter. So here's uh, you know, five handing off the line. There's a penalty flag down in uh, 10 seconds. There's a big hug uh, uh, by the coach. Yeah, huh? Yeah, you bet. And this man about to make perhaps his final announcement. He's retired. Five yards, face mask penalty. Attacked on the end of the run. He's second down. He's been a good official down of the SEC. And uh, perhaps his final announcement is for a face mask tacked on at the end of the run. And here comes the end of the game right now. Oregon wins the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. 38 to 16 and down we go now to Jack Aroon. Jack. Joey Harrington, congratulations. You are the king of the Tostitos. Fiesta Bowl. Now, what sort of a statement does this make for the national championship? That's not up to me. It's up to everybody watching the game. We played our hearts out today. We played against the hottest team in the country. Just take a look. Just take a look. Now, you're going to be rooting for Nebraska? You better believe I'm going to be rooting for Nebraska. I'm going to be sitting with my friends and my family and watching that game closer than anybody else. Congratulations. Thank you very much. There we have it. Joey Harrington and the Oregon Ducks with a huge win. Again, the final score, 38-16. Oregon wins it. And ABC Sports is online at ESPN.com. Keyword, ABC Sports. Stay tuned now. We'll be right back with the Ford Mid-Game Report after this. So long, everybody.